triple C. I'm gonna make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really count the heat. What's up, everybody? Henry Sudo here, aka Triple C. And you guys, welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback, where I'm going to be breaking down the one and only Robert. Whitaker, the former middleweight champion. I do believe that there's little details that he could make that could potentially get him that belt once again. From his entries, from his blitz steps, from his takedowns, capitalizing on certain opportunities that he needs help on. I've been, I've been bugging my producer for the last three months. I want to do something on Robert Whitaker because I know how good he is. Will he be able to make those adjustments to regain that middleweight championship once again? Guys, this episode is brought to you by Fruv. I am literally down 15 pounds, all thanks to Fruv. Guys, you guys go to any Kroger store and get yourself some. Now, let's get straight to it. And here we have Robert Whitaker versus Israel Adesanya. Again, I mean, the height, there's a height difference here. Israel's a little, little uh, you know, obviously he's got the height advantage and he has the crazy reach advantage. But there was one thing in this fight that I felt like Whitaker did have something going and it was his in and out movement and really investing in those in those leg kicks, really throwing Israel off this fight. I was actually here, I was actually in Melbourne for this fight. Yeah, notice he's throwing the fake, yeah, little things like that. I can tell Israel's kind of steady, he's, he doesn't, you know, making his movement unpredictable. That's one thing that I don't like, because sometimes he will reach as he blitz. He leans that body a little too forward. T taking a little more chances, even though this fight only went, what, two or three rounds, I forget. It was, uh, uh, Whitaker attitude he just happened to get caught with that leading hook but you know pretty basic kind of a little more a little more Volkanovski like he'll, he'll throw those overhands those leapy hooks yeah he'll do that he'll do that he'll do that the only difference is, is Israel really saw those supermans coming at least how he'll he'll kind of run lean yeah He'll throw that jab, but this, this this is this is this is where I feel like Robert Woodard could really make like some huge improvements. And I said it before, even prior to if you guys go back and watch uh, me kind of analyze how is it that you want to break down Israel right here. He can kick. Look, he's got that nice little bent, but he he's also very heavy on that lead leg, and it's there. And you heard him say, you, you get hit in the perineal nerve, it all changes. Yup. Just in the line of fire. Just in the line of fire. Blitzing in, as I said. Blitzing in a little too much. Where he breaks distance. You want to really disguise that. But there has to be a fake before you blitz. Or you could just blitz, but you shouldn't hang your you shouldn't hang your body. That's the first time you caught him with that right hook. You know, still blitzing. Like, like there's times where Robert Whitaker does have to like move it he just slowly missed it but that just means this, this is why it's it's important for him to set up fake faint something before you start your blitz because now now israel's kind of starting to kind of understand his rhythm and his movement this is round two here yep throws that jab yeah and he'll go he'll commit who followed up by a kick yeah just in the line of fire just in the line of fire, like you, you can't be in this positions with a guy like Israel. Look, boom, you see right at, right there, bring everything back. Look, their legs are touching. Nobody did, this is, this is where I'm just like kind of dumbfounded. It's like, why continue to keep striking with the striker? You know, like this, this is like the, my biggest team for, for, for a guy like Robert Whitaker is this tactical game. Boom, just in the line of fire with that guy that does that leaning hook. A guy that, it's not a check hook, it's his own hook. He leans, it's a limb, I call it the limbo hook. Lean, and then hit here, and then really took him away with that other one. Bah! Like so. And uh, you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. This is their second title fight. This is this is the second time Robert fought Israel Adesanya. Um, I almost felt like it was maybe the same fight, but this guy, he only needs a little bit of that tweaking. Can you isolate and formulate a good game plan for a Robert Whitaker to make those adjustments? Again, Israel Asanya. Yeah, but a little more cautious. Oh, he didn't caught with, he got caught with that right hand. It's just, look, Israel, yep. How is it that Robert Whitaker fights going backwards against the cage? Israel did a good job getting that jab in there. Or I'm sorry, that uh, left straight. He's southpaw right now. 
No setup going in, butt out. There's nothing there. There's nothing there for Robert Whitaker. You know what I mean? Like, like there's really not a commitment. Maybe start a fight with him before you actually level change. Like, really throw something at him because you're really not disguising. You're you're changing levels too far out, which is causing that. You know, a little, you know, entries off, entries off. There is no fake. There's no fence. You gotta cover this. You gotta really fake if you want to take down. I just felt like in this fight, like he was uh, super cautious. You know, reaching for that double jab, it's there, but I just didn't see that 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 commitment from uh, Robert. It's almost like you, you can respect your opponent, but if you over-respect a guy, like, again, look, that's where a level change right here, guys. That's where you can level change and literally take somebody down, but Robert Whitaker chooses to continue to keep throwing hands. I mean, this could have been another left hook from Israel. Yup, 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 exactly. Let's go back to that real quick. Look at how close she got this time in order for him to get the takedown. Look, legs are touching and he's starting his transition to his takedowns. He's still very defendable there. But Israel, you know, right there, controlling the wrist. Look for that wrist, Robert. Look for that wrist. Bring your body up top. Boom, right there, right away. Looking for that wrist, right? Like, there, there has to, or, or exchange position. You know what I mean? Letting them here, like, go off and, cover, and do a front cover. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Beat up the knees. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if, if you lose a position, this is what I told Khabib when he was fighting against Connor. If Connor is getting up and you're losing the position, switch over front cover this dude you know he, he never he never invested in this you know what i'm saying like like right about there this is where you run your feet come up top and you front cover and you start a whole new position like understanding the game but look he, he let go of the legs now he's letting this dude just stand up he's away from the cage actually i don't even think the cage is holding him up but that's that's one that's one area that i see robert could really make a huge difference like yeah, he had, he had the right idea. I just think there's times where you gotta literally bring your hips in. So as you go, boom, go ahead, break it in frames. Yeah, you see, there's times where okay, that butt is too high. Look look at the direction of his butt. This is where the hips and everything has to come in. Or or the other option that Robert does have is he can pull his head out to eventually front cover. There's a way that Daniel does it very well. He'll shoot, he'll come out to eventually front cover. Yep, countering, countering, yep, yep, smother him, smother him. Now, what is it that Robert Whitaker is actually going to do from here? You capitalize, what, what what top control, you know what I'm saying? Like, letting him get up again, that's crazy. This is why I say, understand folk style wrestling. Folk style wrestling, American style wrestling, collegiate style wrestling is the best because he never chopped them down. You know, as soon as he came off forward, you got to chop him down. There's crab rides, there's certain positions that Pete, that, that if Robert was to give him, you know, really spend time in American style wrestling, he'd develop and, 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 he, and Israel wouldn't have the ability to get up. It's, it's not just jujitsu. Yep, yep, got him countering, beautiful double leg. Throws it, I like how, I like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's there, Robert. And then notice, notice how he dragged him this way. Like he didn't get across, he literally dragged him and pulled him this way. Which is cool. It's an off balance. And look at how, look at how it again. Look, look at where the wrist is at. I bring up the legs. Look right there. You got to be looking for the wrist right away. Again, he's letting him get to his tripod, and now he's getting out again. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm sure Israel's strong there, but you also have to have your go-to moves like right away, right away, tight wasting, chopping him down or crab riding, but something. But you cannot let this dude get to his feet. Yeah, not not everything for Robert Whitaker has to be blitz, Robert. Like, learn how to just throw a right hand, a, a, a jab, a one-two, a two-three. Or it's not always a, a, a blitz or a, an explosive movement. It's, it's great to have different varieties. Again, getting close to the leg. But look, look, you know what I'm saying? Look at this. This is like wrong. This is like wrong. Because now he's hunched over. You don't want to be in those positions. It, it, right. You know what I mean? You, you guys see what I'm talking about? When he, he when he's able to get his hips through, that's how you want to shoot every single shot. And you have to remember how is it that that felt. And then watch. Look at how, look at how he gets his head high. 
his hips are in, he's tight, close, and there's a takedown right away. Look, you gotta look for the wrist. Grab, find the wrist, man, or, or come up top of Israel. Like, you, I, would, I would front cover again. He's staying in a position that's not gonna help him. Let go of this, come up top, and drown him here. You see what I'm saying? Right there, okay, you feel, you feel him start to get up. Transition, leave it, bring it over here. Front cover, chest lock. Stay in this position too much. This is tired, man. This guy's being held up. This guy's being held up by the wall, by the cage. You know what I'm saying? Robert, Robert is, he's, he's, he's because of the position that he's in, he's burning more energy. These are things that you got to know. Knee, knee the crap out of his legs. Knee him, dude. Just, you know what I'm saying? Knee, you know, hit him in the peroneal nerve there. Why not? No, no, Robert. Release that, go uppercut left hook. You're not going to, yep, that was one. Now why not pop, pop? Why not run it down the middle? But you see what I'm saying? As soon as that release came, like uppercuts are so underrated. Beautiful shot by him. Nice. Yeah, I missed it. The cage held him up, but he was he was there. Boom. Shot it, and then notice how he goes under hook here and starts to drive here, which lets me know that there's a, there's a level of wrestling that Robert does have. He, uh, you know, people, a lot, people, some people thought Robert won. He lost the fight. He lost. Robert lost the fight because he didn't take as many risks as he should have. Like maybe in the beginning, I'm not sure if it's if it was what happened in the first fight that kind of messed Robert up. But uh, you know, it's there. The, the, the little technical adjustment that Robert Whitaker can can make that could really uh, put him. You know. That could really set him up for, you know, for victories, you know, controlling the wrist, you know, crab rides. Don't let Israel, if you're losing a transition, come up top. Change positions. Like, you know, so Israel beat him fair and square. After watching Robert Whitaker fight Kelvin and what he was able to do to a big dude like this, man, like a solid, not even Israel couldn't even hurt this dude. If this guy has the ability to stop a guy like that, that just lets you know how good this dude is. He really is. Other than Ezra, I mean, I think he's the toughest matchup for any of these guys. He'll throw that, he'll smoke that jab to start loading this right here. Boom, that, that's one of his, that's one of his leg kicks. And if you, if you get closer to this dude, this dude will throw and he'll throw with, he, he uh, Robert Whittaker's an explosive fighter, you know, but are, do you have the ability to slow him down and teach him uh, uh, things to be stable? You can tell he's setting up that kick. Boom, he'll blitz in with that. Yeah, nice. Nice, notice that trip. Notice how he used those legs. Notice how to use this. Look at, look, look at where the head's at. Head, leg trip, circling this dude. Boom. You know, he got caught by the cage, but same thing. He's allowed, he, he, Robert Whitaker needs a good wrestling coach. Like a really good guy that knows top and bottom. Folk style wrestling. Bah, down the middle. Beautiful. That that's what I would like to see more from him. More of those one twos down the pipe. Bah. Yeah, Cannoneers take the Cannoneers his distance is off. If you're that close to Robert, you gotta go first. This man will always yup, there it is. Notice how he threw that right hand. This is Robert Whitaker's signature move here. He'll throw that right hand and he times it correctly with that leg kick. I was able to steal this from him. Boom, he went one two, but still. Throws a right hand, hits him. Bah! He'll pull it back too on top of that. He's hurt. And, and, and I think it caught part of the glove, but it rattles you, man. And sometimes it was those legs, boom. No, his foot actually hit him there. Hit him on his forehead. They don't take much, guys. Yeah, and then it, uh, a cannoneer's laying him in. He's there and been with that jab a little too much. Ooh, Cannonier hurt him there. I tell you what, man, that's one thing that Robert does have. He, he does have heart. Yeah, did a good, good job. Uh, Robert Whitaker did a good job in this fight. I'm just like, man, Robert Whitaker did a good job. If you're able to hurt a guy like this, it was, uh, you know, the dude's got power. Next! Yeah, so here we have, uh, this was this was Robert Whitaker's uh, last Last fight, and I tell you what, man, I know this man, and I know how tough this dude is. This dude spars with David Benavides, 
uh, who is the middleweight champion of the world, 168 pounds. The next guy to fight Canelo. And I'm just impressed by how is it that that this man was able to hurt a dude like this man. Because this, this guy, you know, half inch reach advantage for Vittori. I mean, these guys are practically the same on everything. You know, minus the age, he's just a little younger. What makes Robert too uh, unpredictable, it is his movements. That little sway. You can, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a moving, he's always moving, so he's not a stationary target. And he's able to find that rhythm. There, there, there it goes again. There, that one, two, sneak, sneak the right punch to eventually look for that head kick. You see what I'm saying? That's the signature. That, that's one thing that I'm just like, hey, this guy is so good at that. And now he's just unleashing his one twos, which was good. As I said before, he, uh, he needs a little more of that. And not everything has to be to hurt him. You got to invest in the fight. Oh, now you have it. Look at this. You guys know this guy? You guys know this handsome guy? Marvin Vittori has to take the space from Whitaker if he wants to, if he, if he wants success. Stay in the pocket. He really did. You know why? Because this whole fight, this man was controlling the distance. Boom. Yep. Even, even through the glove, he was able to catch him. Yep. Body. Notice. This your one that notice everybody's thinking head. This is what I love about uh about you know you know chess because now he's boom looking for the body. Bah. Nice kick off of uh, th th this is good to have off of people who are southpaw because you you know when people are southpaw they're easier to get. Same thing goes for him. He's got the lead leg on him too. Yep, there it goes again. Oof. Yeah, that shook him. I mean, I tell you what, man, Marvin's a tough son of a gun. Now he, now he's thinking kick. Now he's bringing in the hands. He's done enough in the third round for him to think. Oh, there it is again. There it is again. But, but this is the key, guys. Is these guys are letting this dude in, and, and you know he's he's at the right distance to blitz. But these guys are just blocking. There's things that are gonna come. Ooh. Yeah, you can tell he was going for the head. And I think he knew. And I think Marvin just dipped down. So he was like, I know where it's coming. And I tell you what, he, since the Israel fight, since the first one, he, since he, even the second one, he's made a lot of adjustments. Robert's made a lot of adjustments. Bomb. Yeah, now he's just throwing it. Now he's just there to kind of just scare him. There's a minute left. Oh, nice. You see what I'm saying? Like, like this is what makes, this is what could really make Robert Whitaker extremely dangerous. Because now they're thinking hands. And this is where he dips down and finds that level change. Fakes that right hand and straight up a spear blast double. Beautiful. It's a great way to end around. Yo. Marvin Vittori's got to go for broke. He just got to create a fight and go. Yep, Robert Whitaker is one dangerous dude. Has, he has not only has he beat all the contenders, but he has hurt them. And I think that's the difference. And now I would like to take it to what I call the three T's, the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. Let's go. So the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. I would like to start off with Whitaker right here. The threshold. The threshold. Because I think, I do believe this is one of his greatest gifts he has the grit um you know you see him in the romero fight he you know he will bite down on a mouthpiece and actually literally fight you he will try to find a way to win but at the same time he's actually he's also you know uh injury prone what's what's a lot of a lot of stuff that's happened this past from being out for about a year you know my question is does he really have a good system how is it that he should be training but uh regardless of that when i seen in the fights when he does fight you know i think this is his greatest gift his ability his ability to just be tough and his ability to understand his uh his threshold you know his cardiovascular so for that reason um i'm gonna have to i, I do believe this is his greatest gift so i'm gonna have to give him a nine i just can't quite give him a 10 because of the injury prone stuff and what is it that happens um, the next one I would like to maybe go over um, right here, the technique. Uh, there's a lot of blitz things from, and he's really, really good at whether he double jabs or throws that right hand. His techniques are 
they're really good. I've been able to kind of pick up on certain things. But his striking is not the problem. I would like to see him do more one-twos, more basic punches rather than always, you know, lunging and jumping in. And there's times too where he'll lunge and he'll bring his body forward as he got in trouble and he's, as he got caught with that with that with that limbo hook from Israel. So for the technique, I'm gonna. I, I think there's just a lot of small details that he needs help on. So for that reason, I'm probably gonna have to give him an 8.5. You know, and, and I'm being as honest as I possibly can. You know, and, and a lot of where these scores are coming from are literally from the from the fights that he's had with Israel. You know, because you're only as good as you know what I mean. You train for a world title, you get ready for a world title, and uh, you know me as a, as a professor, I'm gonna I'm gonna judge you on that. And then tactics. You know, tactics. Um, you know, sometimes techniques and tactics, they are different. Tactics is more of, can you fight the game plan accordingly? Are, are, are you disciplined enough to really make those certain adjustments? You're able, Robert, you're able to fight everybody in a certain way, but, um, you know, the, the, your style, but when it comes to those high level guys, when it comes to Israel Adesanya, I, I, I see the same guy. I really do. The guy that, you know, I don't see you investing in anything any leg kicks, and as you saw with that Pereira fight. So for that reason, I'm probably gonna have to give you another 8.5. Can you add that for me, Michael? What do we have here? I'm horrible at math, people. So as we add up the whole score, sorry it took my producer too long, man. I'm not the, you know, I, I thought, you know, I thought he was smarter than that. I'm gonna have to give him a, it's right here, 26 out of 30, you know. If he didn't fight in Israel Adesanya, man, this guy would at least go up a couple points. You know, he'd be a lot, he'd be a lot higher. Uh, that being said, with Robert Whitaker, as we have the champion right now with Alex Pereira, I think, and I know that this guy, that this, it's a really good matchup for Robert Whitaker. Why? Is because he does have those takedowns, and if and if Israel was able to get takedowns off of uh, Alex Pereira, then that means. Uh, and that means that those takes are going to come into play for a guy like Robert Whitaker. But this is the only thing that scares me. Right here. The tactics. Will he be able to stay disciplined with an Alex Pereira? Because he does. I can, e I can easily see Robert Whitaker regaining that bout. And then, you know, having a third fight with Izzy. And I think that's how you deal with it. You know, I think, uh, I think there's a lot of things that he can do through the technique, obviously. I think he needs to come to America, or I think he needs to fly somebody to Australia that knows top bottom folks start wrestling, teaching them how to crab, uh, you know, maybe buying some instructional videos from Khabib, stealing some pages from, from Khabib. I know I have, and I truly do recommend it. The threshold, I think, uh, you know, because of the injuries that you've had in the past, um, you know, I wonder if you're overtraining and really bring and put a science team together where they're literally able to help you. You know, overall, I think Robert Whitaker should be next for an Alex Pereira because Izzy is 0-3 against, uh, against Pereira. But at the same time, you know, looking out for Izzy, because I do like Izzy. As much as I talk smack, man, I respect the dude, man. He's been, uh, he's been able to prove me wrong several times. Yeah, but, but, but maybe, too, is always because he's been fighting my friends. But anyways, that being said, I think this guy's a good matchup. I think he's a bad matchup for a guy like Alex Pereira because of the wrestling, the blitz step. I think, uh, I think him having more championship experience will really play dividends, dividends in that fight. So I hope you guys enjoyed that breakdown. I'm your host, Triple C. For any of you guys that want any analysis, fight feedback is coming to you. That's right. Fight feedback is to you. Now, you guys can send a video to bdjfanatics.com. Type in fight feedback, bro. That's right. Henry Sudo, aka Triple C, will get a chance to analyze your wrestling videos and your mixed martial arts videos. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A big shout out to our sponsor, Fruve. Triple C is out! What's up, everybody? Henry Cejudo here, the Olympic champ and two division champ in the UFC. And guess what, guys? I am here to let you guys know that fight feedback is coming to you. Yes? I said it to you, where I get a chance to analyze your fights and your wrestling matches. That's right, for you. That's all you guys have to do is send your videos to bjjfanatics.com. 
click on the fight feedback link and I, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C, will analyze your video. So no more time to waste. Let's get at it. Let's get better. Triple C is out.